the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to the University Church of St. Mary the Virgin this morning on the feast of the holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity, about which we will be hearing more later, I'm sure, in the sermon. So you're very welcome. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, in vengeance and weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are and truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the of our to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty 
to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and our hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For the word of the Lord. the Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, that was just your sermon for today. We can all go home now. Or at least it should be your sermon for today, because it's probably going to be the most orthodox thing that I say this morning. In fact, after that statement, everything else will risk being at least mildly heretical, and it will almost certainly be only provisional. There's a bit of an ongoing joke amongst clergy that we all draw straws as to who has to preach on Trinity Sunday, and it inevitably falls to the most junior to try and unpack the impossible. So it's really good to see the University Church continuing that noble tradition. Because the Trinity is one of the most notoriously challenging doctrines to try and explain. And any preacher inevitably falls into one of several heresy traps. They might fall into the trap of modalism, that there's one God who acts in three different roles or modes. Tritheism, that there are in fact three gods who work together as one. Or subordinationism, that God is organized into a hierarchy of persons with the Son and the Spirit being somewhere a bit lower down the pecking order. And that's just to name three of my particular favorite heresies. There are, of course, other heresies available. There's also the well-intentioned but frequently misjudged attempts to liken the Trinity to items which one might find in creation, which each have three elements comprising the whole such as eggs with its yolk, white and shell, water found as ice, liquid and steam, three-leaf clovers, a particular favourite of St Patrick, and even, this was very innovative the other year, fidget spinners. Humans are incredibly creative in the way we use language poetically to try and grasp at the truth. But ultimately, that's all we can really manage this side of the end of time, simply trying to grasp at the enormity of universal truth. Whatever we say about God will only ever be provisional until that day when we see God face to face. So the question remains, what can we say about God? If I asked you what can you say about love, or what can you say about hope, how would you answer? How do you begin to describe or define something that's so vast and amorphous and conceptual? I don't know where I would begin. But if I asked you what is your experience of love or hope, I'm confident that you could each give me hours of eloquent and moving testimony about how you have experienced love and hope or even a sense of the absence of those things in your life at different times. And in that process of sharing your experience, you would reveal to me some deep and powerful truths about their nature. So it is with the triune God. Words always fail when we try to define God. And that's okay because we're human. Although we have this incredible capacity for imagination, we're limited creatures too. And God knows this. So God, of course, gives us Jesus, woven temporally and eternally into the rich tapestry of human experience of the divine to teach us what God is really like. We come to know God most fully through relationship with him and experience of the God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We are all unique people with unique relationships. We do not all experience God in exactly the same way, but we do all experience God 
in some way. And each of us have a story to tell about our experience of God. Some of us experience God predominantly intellectually. Some of us have a more felt or emotional experience. Some of us know God's truth deep in our bodies and use them expressively in worship or through the creative and performative arts. Others experience God profoundly through meditation, silent prayer, or through song. However we each encounter the Divine Trinity, we will all have an experience to share about the God who is both one and three, which if we listen well to each other, will help and challenge ourselves and others to broaden and deepen our experience of God too. We do not need to be afraid of others experience of God or to see those experiences as a threat to our own but we should be able to both honour the person and their experience and also to gently interrogate that story the universal truth truth that all humanity can hold on to as a revelation of God's triune nature and personhood Jesus says to his disciples in the Gospel of John, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when the Spirit of truth comes, he will lead you into all truth. His first disciples encountered the living God in the person of Jesus Christ in an incredible way. He walked among them. He ate with them and taught them about God the Father in heaven to whom he would be returning, but he also promised them the gift of God the Holy Spirit, not only to comfort them, but also, as we hear, to lead them into all truth. Jesus preached a triune God, but he didn't try and explain it all to our limited human minds. Instead, as we heard, he promised the gift of that third person of the Trinity, the Spirit, to lead us into all truth. Attempting to answer the question, what is truth, is probably beyond the scope of our time together today. But it's an important question, because it's the question that continues to gather us Sunday by Sunday, day by day, and keeps us searching after God. Some of us gathered may have had profound and life-changing experiences of God that convicted us of the truth of God's existence and of God's love for us. Some of us have a quiet and persistent trust and come to this place today seeking more of God as we worship and learn together. And some of us cannot point to God with any certainty. But we know we are seeking after truth. And we sense, deep in our bones, that it might just be found here. We need each other on this journey of discovery. And we need our forebears of faith and the wisdom of their experience and their collective discernment too. The councils of the church which named the truths which we profess today in the creed wrestled with one another, with each other's ideas about and experiences of God and eventually found in them common, deep and lasting truth revealed to us through relationship relationship with God and relationship with one another. None of us have all the answers, but humbly acknowledging the paradox and provisionality of what we can conceive in our limited humanity, we can still proclaim the truth that has been revealed to us. In the creed, in a moment, we will collectively affirm that we know God as both one and three. 
as almighty, yet as intensely personal, as vast and unknowable, yet also intimate and revealed to us in Jesus. The God who is Trinity constantly breaks our nice, neat categories. It is as they break open that there we find truth. Today we pray that the Spirit might lead us into all truth. Amen. We stand to profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. <clears throat> Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. After he had served breakfast to his disciples, who had been fishing all night and caught nothing. Lord, we pray for the peoples throughout the world who now have no breakfast, nor lunch, nor dinner, and who have to comfort their hungry children as they cry themselves to sleep. We pray for the work of Christian Aid and other humanitarian organisations who are working to restore a healthy food supply to all nations. Many of the ongoing famines are caused by catastrophic weather events brought about by our own careless exploitation of the world's resources. Strengthen the determination of governments to turn words into actions to prevent a worsening of the climate situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, much of today's food poverty is exacerbated by the war in Ukraine from which a large proportion of the world's grain comes. We pray for the people of Ukraine that they may be delivered from the current strife. And we pray for all refugees from war, not only in Europe, but also in the Middle East and Africa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. 
great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace to all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Particularly at this time, we pray for Tris, Jenny, Betty, AJ, Alexandra, Chrissy, Jamie, Peyton, Nick, Eric, Yaroslava, Chris, Doe, Malcolm, and Rachel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Conqueror of death, remember for good those whom we love but see no longer, and help us to live this day in the sure and certain hope of your eternal victory. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace to you from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace to you from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in one in being and equal in majesty. And so with the angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. 
He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. <clears throat> Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one into your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Father Almighty, forever and ever. So we can pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our offenses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God.
Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise. be seated for our notices. First of all, we have some bands of marriage to publish.
I publish the Bands of Marriage between Theodore Jackerman Silkstone Carter of the Parish of the University Church, Oxford, and Christina K. Merkett, also of the University Church, Oxford. This is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. And we pray for Theodore and Christina as they prepare for their wedding. God of love, we thank you that you call us deeper into relationship. We thank you for the love that is between Theodore and Christina, for all that is bringing them to their wedding day, and the love which will sustain them in their married life together. We pray now that you would be in the detail and the preparation, that you would calm any nerves and give them your confidence to step into their new life together. Amen. It's been really good to worship with you this morning and please do stay for some refreshments in the De Broom Chapel straight after the service. And then at 12pm at noon, um, up in the old library, we've got a very special Faith in Action forum today. Al Dutton, who many of you will know from this congregation, will be speaking about the work of the Faith in Action group and sharing just some of the examples of your, how your generosity has had an impact both at home and in international projects too. Al is a member of the Faith in Action group and is also the chief executive of SCIAF. It promises to be a really good talk, so do come and join us at 12pm up in the Old Library. Also today at 3.30pm, there's Choral Evensong. The choir are in particularly good voice this morning, and I trust they also will be this afternoon. It's sounding fabulous. Do come along at 3.30pm and enjoy a beautiful and contemplative service. Choral Evensong is one of my favourite services. Alas, I can't be there tonight because I'm preaching elsewhere, but it's one of my favourite services because it's an opportunity to just let song and God wash over you. So do come and enjoy that moment at 3.30pm. Next Sunday, um, we have two events happening. We have a book swap, which is um, happening during the refreshments following the service. So if you have any books that you've collected up, perhaps over the various lockdowns, you've been an avid reader, um, and you think you won't read them again, but you'd like to bless somebody else with those, please do bring them along. Um, you can exchange those books for others, but also to make a modest donation to the work of Christian Aid. And then immediately after refreshments, we'll have the parish lunch. Um, so if you do have anything that you would like to bring or contribute to the parish lunch, I believe that we're looking for a few more puddings um, for, for that particular occasion, please do have a word with Margaret Chaundy, um, or indeed um, do email the parish office in the week if you need to. We stand to go out with God's blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.